All right, so I want to do a very quick tutorial on how to use the missing line function on here because I think it'll explain very simply how this tool works. After you use missing line, then I'll do another video on how to use reference line and you'll see how it's basically, you know, how different it is from that tool, which can do live reads and which can follow a prism versus this one where you have to do um, a read over and over again. So what I'll do in this video, actually, I'll do missing line just to show you how to do measurements and then I'll do a quick reference line so that you can see how it's a little bit takes a little bit longer and why uh, people would prefer using that one if they could afford it could invest with it and how it saves them time and money in the long run all right so i have set out there a prism and the reason i'm using a prism isn't because i can lock onto it but i wanted to show that you can see this function at the top right corner if i select prism i will be able to at least measure to it so i'll go ahead and select the um prism I'm using which is a 360 degree standard prism all right and now the tool knows to look for that now I'm the one responsible though to make sure I'm dead on the prism which is why you know it doesn't matter what you use what you're targeting to is whatever you can see best when you're using this tool and you look through that eyepiece if you can see your target clearly use that um, a lot of people use crosshairs with uh, on, on tape they use the rod where they can easily pinpoint the crosshairs of the rod. Um, again, this tool is not about using the highest class of prisms. It's just using the best thing you can see through the optical to make sure that you are accurate where you want to be. Because again, it's not going to lock on at all. So real quick, I'm going to zoom in on that prism. Okay, I just zoomed in the prism. And one thing that uh, I wish I could do is show you what the binocular optical piece looks like i call it binocular because that's what i think of first it's a really clear picture that kind of that zooms right in on the prism literally if you look through the optical i'm looking you see a very big huge close-up of the middle of the prism now the prism that we use is nice because it does have lines that show you where the center of the prism is and all i did was took the crosshairs within the optical and i just zoomed right into that center and i know i'm good and now i'll go ahead and go to my application of missing line I will measure my first point, measure, I'll wait for it to acknowledge that it did it, which it did, um, and it tells me my distance from the station, my angles of the station, but before I get any sort of data, I need to make another point, so I'm going to go ahead and say next, I'm going to measure point two, and I'm just going to move the tool, I'm going to go ahead and put my direct read on, turn my laser on, and let me see, I'll point it, you cannot see it probably, but I'm on that beautiful tree right there. I will go ahead and measure that second point. It is measuring and it's going to give me some data. So here's the data from the second point. It tells me my angles to the second point and the distance from the station to the second point. Let me see my results to see the info about that line. It tells me that my slope distance is about 11 feet and 3 inches. My horizontal distance is about 11 feet and 2 and a half inches. And uh, my height differential is about 9 inches from point one to point two, my slope. Anyway, all this information you would get also on the POS 180 using our tablet. Um, and again, you could, but, you could, but the nice thing about that tool is that you could be out there in the field doing measurements right there while the this unit's sitting on top of a hill looking down at you. So it's out of the way and you're just kind of walking around the site not worrying about anything. So that's how this works. Now let me go ahead and move into a reference line because this missing line function, I've already done a tutorial on it uh, in another video with the 180. And again, as you can tell, it's pretty simple. Uh, it's basically the same exact thing with the other tool. So I'll just go ahead and go into reference line and I will go home. I'll go to reference line. And the first thing it asks me to do is to set my station up. Now, I would not be able to set a station up. Um, I would not be able to set the station up if I was not level on my on my unit but because i'm level it's allowing me to go through it if i wasn't level it would show a level gear gauge um, on the uh the screen and i'd have to use my knobs down here to get it level and good to go for the rest of the um the rest of the uh the stationing so now that i have a uh a station that is level i can now go ahead and set a reference line it's uh telling me that my heights are on 
I'm using a coordinate graph system, I'm actually going to create a new job real quick and so I can use a normal building line. The reason I don't want to use a coordinate graph system is because I don't know exactly where my lines are for this CAD file that I've loaded. I'm going to just do something arbitrary. So one second, I'm going to create a new job. So here I am creating a new job. Uh, I just called it reference two uh, arbitrarily. I have no DXF file. I'm going to say okay. And I'm going to say okay. And notice if I go to graph, there is nothing there, which is what I want because I am going to go into a reference line and I'm going to say a new station. And instead of coordinate graph system, which I do not have, I'm going to use a building line, which is basically I go to a site, I have no CAD file, but I have the surveyor points and I'm going to create a line from that and pull my dimensions from that. Again, I have a tutorial on this with the uh, 180. Um, but anyway, my anywhere is going to be selected. I just want to show you how this works with the 18. Okay, so I'm going to measure a point one. I'm just going to, you can't see the laser, but it's over there on the ground by the uh, white parking line. I'm just going to measure point one, and I'm going to make my point two be on the other end of the uh, parking line. And we're going to use the this parking line here for uh, our line. So now it's telling me to measure point two. I'm just going to go ahead and turn my unit and point it to the ground. You cannot see the laser, but it is right there on the edge of that and it's asking me to measure it. My height of rod is zero right now because I'm not using a rod if I was and I was concerned about heights. Let me just zoom this in for you. I'm sorry about that. There we go, my height of rod is zero. <sighs> you know, if I was using heights and I was gonna be moving my rod up and down, maybe I'd adjust that, but I'm just using my laser, so I'm gonna measure. My second point. I'm gonna let it take a sweet time. Got to be patient with these things, you know. I'm going to pause this while it finishes. Oh, I might as well show you what it said. It said not able to measure distance. That's sometimes because it's uh, on something that's either too reflective. I'm going to just move it a little bit over and see if that helps. If you run into that, just try to change the surface you're on or just try to redo it. Let's see if this works this time. Maybe I'm too close. Okay, so I got another error message. Uh, I wasn't able to measure, so this is a perfect example for me to show you what I'm going to be doing. I just went ahead and got the rod and put it out there right on the point that I wanted to measure. I set my height of rod at five feet. All right. Oh, can you see that? I hope you can. Okay, height of rod at five feet. Now, let's see if it works. Measuring the distance to the prism. And voila, it worked. So there's a workaround. Sometimes you run into that, just change the what you're looking at. Uh, hopefully it doesn't ruin your day if you can't get a certain measurement because of the surface you're targeting. All right, anyway, so now I'm gonna go ahead and go back to direct read because I want to point at the ground. And I'm gonna say next. I'm gonna call this stationing stationing. That's fine, my height of instrument doesn't matter because I'm not gonna be using my height of instrument as a benchmark. I never use height of instrument as a benchmark. That's always zero for me. I set the station height some way, some way else. Um, so I'll just set a station height. I will do a manual height. I will call my benchmark that wherever I'm pointing right now because I do not care. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and put my header out of zero because I'm not using a rod. I'll just go ahead and measure the ground. Hopefully this works. I'm reading asphalt. Sometimes it doesn't work. It's like the asphalt maybe is cracked here and there. I don't know. Uh, don't, don't quote me on that. If not, I'm going to just say forget heights because I don't really care about heights right now. I just want to show you how the tool works. Yep, the tool's having trouble measuring asphalt. I have seen this before. Uh, it would be good if I had some like stickers or something on the ground that would help me out. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say forget heights. I'm going to just call that height as the height. I'll press OK and I'll set the station. Okay, so now I'm going to say OK. My reference line is set. I'm sorry, my hands are really cold. Sorry if it's shaky. Um, if I wanted to shift the line, I could, but I'm not going to shift the line because I don't really care. I'm using the uh, the parking line, right? Okay, so now um, notice it's not giving me a live read. I'm moving the tool. You can see me turning the tool. It's not giving me a live read of what I'm looking at at all. Um, even if, I mean, I know it's having a hard time reading asphalt. Uh, that might be a situation, but even if it was able to read asphalt um, it, in this situation, it, it, it wouldn't be giving me a live read because I haven't actually measured anywhere. But let me just see, okay, hopefully this works this time. I'm gonna measure that wherever I am right now, I'm just pointing the tool out there. I'm gonna measure this distance. Oh, good, I measured it. See, sometimes it works on asphalt. Okay, 
So I just measured a distance and noticed that I had to measure before it gave me a read. Um, on the other tool, it would give me a live read of no matter where I was, right? Uh, because it's following me, it's following my prism, it's following wherever I am. I can move the tool manually and it'll tell me exactly what it's reading at. This is not giving you a live reading. You have to measure it and stick it where, it's, where you're looking at to, to pinpoint where you're actually at. So now I know that wherever I'm pointing at is somewhere out there, guys. I, you can't see the prism, I can't see the prism, <coughs> I don't really care. But it's showing me my, if I set my height right, it was showing me my exact height, uh, my lines. I'm seven feet away from the zero zero there. And I'm about 22 feet out there away from the line. So I can find it just like that. <coughs> Excuse me. So, but notice I turn the tool, turn the tool. It's not giving me a live read. But if I press measure, hopefully that works again. Let's, let's hopefully we get some luck here. There we go. We got some luck. Um, it gave me another measurement. But notice I had to measure it to, for it to tell me how far off my line was. I hope this is making sense. And it shows you the difference between this tool and that tool. Imagine... Right, you're out there on the in the field. You know your tool. You know your dimensions. And you just want the tool to lead you to a certain dimension. The tool will lead you if you're using that tool. This tool, you have to do measurement over measurement over measurement to figure out where exactly you're trying to go. And so it's. Uh, I mean, I don't want to say it's extremely complicated. You're probably going to get really good at it if you're using this tool a lot. But you can see, you know, from this video, you can see that that was a simpler option than this is. And again, that's a twenty thousand dollar more tool than this. Because uh, that really goes a long way, especially when you're getting higher and higher and further and further away from the station. Uh, you don't want to have to keep zooming in to, to find a target. You'd rather have the tool just follow you with a prism. All right, so now let's say, sorry that the keep zooming in and out. I'm going to go to a line to point, and this is where I'm going to say, okay, take me to my, z I'm going to just take me to my zero, zero. All right? I just want to show you how this works. All right? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now I'm going to say take me to my zero, zero. Now, if I was using the other tool, it would just tell me where to walk. I mean, that's all. It would tell me where to walk or where to turn the tool. In this case, the first thing it tells me to do in the top right, it tells me to adjust my angle. So I'm going to go ahead and move the tool until that gets to zero. I could fine-tune it as much as I want, but I'm going to make sure there's no arrows. Uh, okay, bro, oh, I almost had it. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, okay. Uh, so gentle. You know, it's at least it's accurate, right? Let me use this knob here. Uh, I think it's this one. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna fine tune this, get it right there. Okay, uh, I almost had it. Okay, got it. So now it's telling me that I'm at the right horizontal angle, alright? And now it's telling me to, um, measure where I'm at right now. So I'm going to measure where I'm at. And now it can tell me how to, where I need to move as far as my vertical angle. So now I need to just, now I just worry about this knob right here, this top knob, because I already moved my horizontal. Now I'm just moving this down until you see how it's saying I'm, I'm up, um, you see how it's telling me to go up or down? Up? Oh, it's telling me to go up, not down. My bad. Let me go up. And once I get to the correct up angle... Oh no, I gotta go down. You know, you can kind of skip through this video if I'm taking a little bit long, but you can see it's, you know, I gotta... My hands are cold, first of all. Alright, hang on. Uh, I'm getting down, I'm getting closer. Because right now it knows the angles I'm supposed to be, but it doesn't know my distance. It's able to figure out what angle I'm supposed to be at, but I haven't measured the distance to make sure I'm right on. All right, let me move this uh, to the right a little bit more. All right, let me measure again. All right, so it says that uh, I'm basically where I'm supposed to be, but because I have heights turned on, it's not able to, uh, because I have a height associated with the points now, it's trying to find the point over there that's like seven feet high. So anyway, that's how it works. You have to, it, it works with the angles of the tool. I hope that makes sense, but basically that, that's how you'd have to find your points. You'd have to maneuver the horizontal angle first, maneuver the vertical angle second, and then you're at your point. This tool over here, it'll just lead you right there. All right, my hands are cold. I got to close this off. In the comments, let me know if you have any questions, but that is basically it.